Hello, everyone. Sorry um, for the delay to get started. We have pretty much everybody join in, uh, looks like it. And i um, like to welcome you to our monthly webinar that usually um, happens in the first week of every month. But this time, because of the new year being so close, we pushed it one week. So that's why we have our webinar today. Um, again, thank you for participating. And um, I should have, um, let me see, my Dr. Um, Gutierrez joined me uh, shortly. Okay, so um, again, this is our informational webinar for weight loss surgery in um, Mexico. I want, as you know, uh, we give away a $2,000 off of surgery raffle and to qualify or be eligible, you just have to Make sure you have a health questionnaire submitted before or today in our system. And remember this giveaway is for Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez only. And if you have submitted a health questionnaire or, um, uh, or um, doing it today, Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez would be your surgeon of your choice. And another requirement is we need you to be present until the end of the webinar. And that's when we do our raffle and we do the drawing and then we pull a name of a winner at the end. So again, you could go to um, mexicobariatriccenter.com forward slash health dash questioner forward slash. And that's where you do the HQ if you haven't done it already. I believe um, Dr. Gutierrez just joined us. Hello, how are you? Morning, Good thank morning. you. Thanks everybody for yes. being here with us, thanks. Yes, thank you so much for your time. Um, so, um, during the presentation, which is the first part would be my presentation and Dr. Gutierrez would take over when we get to the more technical medical explanation of the procedures. And um, we try to cover as many questions that is commonly asked as possible. And please make sure that you pay attention so we don't have to go over the same answers again, because at the end, usually we get quite a bit of um, questions and we basically wanna take time to cover all of them. Uh, so we appreciate you paying attention and we don't have to repeat the same question. Um, basically the topics that we cover today is what is obesity? risks of being obese, weight loss surgery, WLS, which is in um, abbreviation. And Don, we talk about MBC, Mexico Bariatric Center. Um, I didn't introduce myself, I'm sorry. My name is Ron Ellie. I'm the founder and CEO of Mexico Bariatric Center, short MBC. And we're gonna talk about our company, what is it that we provide and what is distinguish us from our competition and the rest of the world. And then we're gonna talk about bariatric surgery. That's when Dr. Gutierrez is gonna take over and um, ex explain all the different procedures, laparoscopic, endoscopic, and we would enjoy his expertise of um, explaining all these procedures for us. And 
we would look at all the different options that the company offers as a whole. And we would talk about bariatric vitamins, which is Emerge that we provide. And at the end, we will have the question and answer QA session that we would cover all your questions, hopefully, today. So basically, you know, being overweight and obese is something that all the countries struggle with, including U.S., and basically, um, you know, the problems that we have is, first of all, of course, of course our genetics is, plays a huge role in this, but also the environment we're living in, you know, the, all the conveniences, all the fast food, all the <clears throat> high calorie drinks and food and processed food and more, you know, ultra processed food. And basically we like to be, you know, not be active and just use conveniences, get in our car and drive and not walk and not use public transportation. Of course, you know, some places public transportations are not quite av available. So, all these are factors that is contributing to this huge problem worldwide. And, you know, I think the fast evolution of technology, being able to provide so much food and readily available to all of us. And, you know, the human being body is not, doesn't have a defense against this problem. And, is really a metabolic disease. And that's being shown more and more that this is a disease. It's like high blood pressure. And um, of course, you know, all this stress that we all go through every day, you know, um, lack of sleep. Some of the medications we take that, you know, contribute to all these problems. Um, in the medical clinical way obesity is basically um, defined as a number you basically plug in your weight and height and it spits out a number and that number puts you in this chart that we're looking at and it shows where you are everybody knows about the concept of bmi which is body mass index so anything above 30 is considered obese and then now we go to super morbidly obese and morbidly obese and super super morbidly obese something we need to make mention here is that our company is not limited of what bmi you are at of course you know we don't qualify you if your bmi is 30 below 30 some exceptions we make uh, for 27, 28 of uh, BMI, if you have some kind of metabolic disease or reservation anyway, but in, in general, we cover anything above 30 and above, which is a better standard than what US insurance companies has. And then we have no limitation. We have done a BMI of 110, 102, 98, so we're not limited of what we can handle in our center that we will see later on what spectrum of services we are able at NBC to, to provide to you. You know, fat cells, or they call them like adipose tissues. Basically, the adipose tissues number increases when, you, when we gain weight. Also, it changes the, the chemical and the structure of it. If you look at uh, the adipose tissue for obese person versus a lean person, which is on my right side of the screen, you see that how the structure is changed. It's just the, not the numbers, it, the structure changes. And that is why we started getting insensitive to insulin, diabetes type two. That's why we get insensitive to leptin. We don't feel the satiety that when we eat you not responding to therapies, even vaccinations are not as effective when this phenomenon happens. So, and then we also know about the risk of being obese. 
And really COVID-19 was even more like emphasize that what can happen to us when we are not lean and when we're not, when we are heavy. So that, so everybody now knows even better after pandemic that, hey, obesity comes with problems, with issues, medical issues. In US alone, 40% of adults are overweight. And I like to always show this animation, which is very neat. Uh, we copied this from CNN that shows that how the fat in the abdomen creates a problem for your lungs and your breathing and starts from there. And it, of course, you know, all your body is under pressure when we are obese. So let's look at this. Okay, well, so much for that. And then, um, of, of course, um, again, the heart disease cardiovascular disease, lung disease, diabetes type two, all these problems, immune system problems is coming with this increase of fat cell in our body. And then again, COVID-19 showed that how the fat cells then is responsible for getting you sick in, in the coronavirus situation. So, now you tell me, okay, Ron, we all know about obesity. We all know about what the risks are. So what is the solution? Okay, so the solution is at this moment, you know, we always have the diet and exercise that we go on diet, we try to do exercise, be active, but it's, we all know that is very challenging your body resists that, and we will see why later on. And that's why we don't see diet and exercise as a proven long-term solution. And then the pharmaceutical. We always, throughout the history, looked for a magic diet pill. You know, uh, of course, you know, all the programs, Weight Watchers, you, those are all around too. But... And then a new wave of the medication, which is really like a Zempic type of semaglutide that came in the market that is supposedly was made for uh, diabetes and bring, bring down, stabilizes your sugar level, but it also created some byproduct, which was losing weight. And of course, you know, um, we will go over that too. So these are all the pharmaceutical available. But again, with all these pills and drugs, you have to keep taking them. So, and then they all have side effects. You know, the, the older ones was all messing up with your brain and you have suicidal thoughts and all that and then the new ones are so new that we don't know very much about but we already know so many side effects so so when it comes to definitive solution for people who are suffering from being overweight is at this time still is bariatrics bariatrics is a quick safe long-term solution for obesity and we'll see why. You know, we talked about diet and exercise. This is the way our body resists. It's like a hurdle that it's in front of you when you are going on diet and exercise. And when we talk about diet and exercise, we're talking about boot camp type of exercise, extensive and, you know, um, you know basically your body resists against diet. And uh, well, we're not saying, well, again, let's reverse and say, okay, exercise is very important. We all have to be active every day, even walking, you know, whatever you can do every day. 
So that's really essential no matter what, whether you go through bariatrics, you know, not go through bariatrics, taking diet, taking medication, you still have to have that exercise component. It's good for your heart, it's good for your health, but you know, it's not a solution long-term to keep your weight off. And basically I mentioned about bariatric, um, obesity being a metabolic uh, disease. And this is how you see why is metabolic, okay? Because our hormones are interacting with our brain and that sets our body thermostat and that's where our system our body is operating around so let's say if you are if this person in the red what we show is overweight and weighs 250 his brain his body the interaction between his brain and his hormones are set at 250. So let's say this person goes on extreme diet and extensive exercise and he loses 75 pounds. Guess what? Because the brain and the body are used to that set point, you can call it metabolic set point, you can call it brain thermostat, you can say whatever you call it, that set point is going to want to bring you back to the 250 that you're used to. So what does body do? It's going to increase your hunger and lower your metabolism. It's going to conserve your fat because it thinks like you are not going to get enough food anymore. So that's how our body react to this diet and exercise. Now, imagine when you do the bariatric surgery, once they cut your stomach and changes your hormones, whether bypass or sleeve, and they do all the rerouting of your intestine and all that, the minute you wake up from the surgery, because of the naturally, they take away those hormones. So your, your body sees in a different set point all of a sudden because your hormones are changed and the interaction between your hormones and brain has a different set point now. So right away, you are on the way to lose weight naturally. It's not by medication. It's not injecting anything in your body. It's a natural way of your body reacting to the surgery. So that person, the minute they get the surgery, even though you are still at the 250 pounds, your brain is thinking you're at 175 pounds. What is it gonna happen? Your hunger goes down, your metabolism goes up, starts to burn fat. So that's why it's quick because it starts burning fat right away and you will not, you will not be hungry like before. And this is the magic. This is the magic of bariatric surgery. We talked about Zempic. There are um, a bunch of them out there. We go V, Manjaro, all these different types. They all work the same way. They all inject uh, GLP-1 hormones in your body, trying to simulate what bariatric does. So when you do bariatric surgery, there are a bunch of hormones that are changing in your body, including GLP-1. There are so many of them. But this medication is trying to simulate just one. And here's the problem. If you are not diabetic and you're taking this for losing weight, there are two problems. One is you're injecting in your body some hormones. And who knows what's the long-term effect? Of course, we already know very few get thyroid cancer. So if you have thyroid problem, you cannot take this medication. You get a bunch of problems, including, including gastric paralysis, which means your, your stomach gets lazy. And after a while, it can have huge consequences. So let's say if you take this for more than six months, maybe 18 months, it's gonna have a bunch of problems. And another problem, which is a 
not related to weight loss is that this medication is expensive, is in shortage. So the so if you're using it for losing weight, you're taking this away from people who really need this for their diabetic problem. So I see that often that the, there are people that who really need this, but they don't have access to it. And for them, it's life, um, you know, it's a life and death issue. So again, Dr. Gutierrez is gonna go over this in detail, but this is the effectiveness and diet and exercise, all the azempic like medication, endoscopic procedures, which is like gastric balloon and ESG uh, endoscopic, um, endoscopic um, sleep gastroplasty, and then all the bariatric surgeries that we offer, including sleeve, RNY gastric bypass, mini bypass, duodenal switch, all that that Dr. Gutierrez is going to cover. So, well, now we come to, okay, so all, not all insurance companies in U.S. are covering for bariatrics, including Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Aetna, Cigna. So they all have different policies, depends on your policy, you may not be eligible. The cutoff for the surgery is also different. If your BMI is more than less than 40, unless you have comorbidities, you're not going to get qualified. And then once they actually let you, if once they make you eligible for surgery, you have to jump through the hoops because they have so many psychological different evaluations and all that. So it's really a hassle. And if you were to pay out of pocket, you're looking at over $16,000, $17,000 for only sleep. Bypass is even more expensive and DS is even more, close to $30,000. So that's not really affordable for everyone's budget to do this out of pocket. So this is where medical tourism comes into the picture. Medical tourism is going abroad by, you know, getting that surgery that you don't, you cannot get where you live. So people from US, Canada, all over the world is coming to Tijuana. And Tijuana has established itself as one of the top centers for bariatric surgery. And, you know, um, by saying that, you have to still be looking into when you are going abroad, which company you're connecting to? Who is it that you're getting surgery from? Is, are you hooking up with the con uh, company that does the coordination for you? Which means the driver will be ready for you when you land or when you drive there? Is the company gonna have a reservation for you in the hotel? take you back and forth to the hotel and hospital, take care of all your needs and make sure you are receiving that quality care because there is a coordination facilitator in between. And if you look at even CDC recommendation, they are recommending that you travel for your medical needs with a company that does all the dynamics for you and make sure you do research you know we always talk about um you know social media social media you know instagram tiktok they put some funny video or some exciting before after picture and by looking at it in facebook instagram you may think like okay you know um this company is legit i'm not saying they're not, I'm just saying we have to do our research, not just look at a couple pictures and say, hey, I wanna go with this company. A lot of companies I know, they do giveaway for patients to go there. And then because they, they're influencers, they kind of advertise, oh, look, I went here with it. But I'm gonna tell you what 
sets us aside from the competition and then you will know what to look for. Again, do your research and we'll show you why you choose NBC when you do select to do medical tourism. We provide quality care at affordable price. We have one of the most affordable prices right now out there. But you see the list of services that we offer. And um, we are a US-based company. We've been around since 2012. Myself, I've been involved in the medical tourism industry in Mexico since 2007. I have traveled to all the locations in Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, Monterrey, Cancun. I know a lot of the hospitals, facilities out there. I know a lot of surgeons out there. So the surgeons that we selected and we're working with, they are handpicked. We know what the quality they're offering. We monitor everything from transportation to your surgery every day, every moment, 24 seven. So what sets us apart? Why choose NBC? Look at the reputation. You go on Google, you know, make sure the reviews are real. On Facebook, the reviews are real. You know, there are so many sites that you can check. You look at before after pictures, you look at the videos we have, you see the recommendations our patients give us. And we are so fortunate to have our past patients be so, you know, compassionate about what we provide that we have actually a team of them, which we call our affiliates that still are out there helping us. I will go over that. Um, you know, our packages are not like stripped down packages. You know, we, we provide all inclusive packages. Safety is number one. Um, we, again, top surgeons that we work with. Um, the type of procedures we offer. I mean, Dr. Gutierrez is going to go over what's the difference between sleep bypass and all that. But at the end of the day, the surgeon that gives you gastric sleep, the technique they use, the experience they have, how much to cut, how close they cut to the bougie and all that makes a huge difference in your outcome to your complications. And let's say when it comes to bypass, for example, if if they don't have a surgeon that can handle a bypass of BMI of more than 50, you're gonna end up getting a sleeve because the surgeon cannot perform the bypass because of your BMI. And then you end up rest of your life not being able to get the surgery. You have to live with the surgery that wasn't really meant for you. Of course, you can always do revision, but I'm saying that's how important the spectrum of the surgery, because all the, you know, the newer companies come in, they offer lower prices to allure you in and say, okay, you know, because it's cheaper, $200, we're going to go with them. But at the end of the day, they have maybe a surgeon that was assistant surgeon before, and all they can do is a very simple gastric sleeve. And again, the experience comes into picture here. The expertise comes into picture. And our scheduling is very simple. You can actually book yourself with our system. So once you submit your health questionnaire, you're gonna get an approval. And then once you get your approval, you can actually go online and pay the deposit and put yourself in, on the calendar. And then, then they're gonna contact you and say, okay, now we require this, this, this. You know, all the educations that educational webinars, seminars we've been doing since the inception. We've been traveling before pandemic, of course, to Texas, to, to Canada, to all, all the points that we travel to, to tell people about the advantages of getting bariatric surgery, weight loss surgery, 
our company, all that. The lowest complication that we have, we're going to go over that. The results that we have. We, we will be around when you need us after your surgery. It's not like we give you the surgery and there's no one there to support you. We have our staff. We have office that we work from. We have administration. We have nutritionists on our staff in our office. We, our surgeon liaison is one of the biggest pieces. And you see that again in a minute how that surgeon liaison is helping you getting the proper surgery. And you know, we do your time off, FMLA. We offer discounted medical tourism coverage. And we'll go over that. That's very important. We are a BBB member, you know, A plus uh, rated. And we have 10 years with, the, with this company and over 20,000 patients, successful surgeries. As a part of being futuristic and looking at what is coming, we started working on this project at the end of 2020. Um, so it's been a few years. This uh, Azar Hospital is going to have 40 rooms, with four operating rooms, everything state-of-the-art, and hopefully we will have this center open soon. And this is how it's going to look like. And, um, you know, I mean, look at the operating, system, uh, operating room. Everything in there is the best of the best from from the technology that is used for gases, whatever, to the operating table. And these are the best of the best that you know, is out there right now in bariatric technology. Um, so I'm going to skip this. Um, this is early on, actually, um, yeah. This is early on when we were framing this place and uh, Dr. Valenzuela, this is during pandemic and we started the project back then. Um, okay, so we talk about why MBC. 10,000 in medical tourism industry, MBC has over 20,000 successful surgeries. Six top surgeons. Well, here it says seven. We actually have seven, but six of them are I'm going to go over. And the packages that are offered is not stripped down. You get the night in the hotel, two or three nights in the hospital. You get all your pre-op tests, post-op tests, private transportation. Again, Medical Tourism Association, Medical Tourism Insurance, which is we call MTI option, I really want you to seriously look at the M purchasing MTI. We don't make it mandatory, but it's the best thing that we are offering. Or, you know, getting you approved is simple, one, two, three. You fill out the health questionnaire, you choose the surgery date, you pay the deposit once you get approval, and you wait on your way to go. So another plus, that you get with us is the support after. Support after is huge because you want the, the, so you basically get the tool by going through the surgery. Now you need to work with your tool. It's 50% of it is you, how you do your post-op diet, how you do your life-changing habits. And this is what makes you long-term success. And in order to do that, you need to have the support. We have few groups, so many different groups. They're getting more specific. Oh, this is the group for this people. But, but overall, we have the, the main group, which is over 10,000 patients. These are actively posting every day. They're answering each other, questioning each other. These are just patients. And we have another one, which is inside 
Facebook group, which is for people who are trying to see if this is a good option for them. They're measuring up our company. Those join into that group. And you see the support that you get from us. We were talking about our past patients. Sarita has been with us since 2005. Rena, these are all past patients. Dawn, Kelly, Jamie, and we have two more that just joined us. These are the patients that are so passionate about the surgery itself and about MBC that they're working around the clock to support patients, whether it's on Facebook, if you have questions for them. These are the backbone. That's what we're talking about. You know, this was the depth of the company instead of just one Instagram post or some influencer following them. You are following a company that has layers and layers of support for you. Again, um, Rina and Sarita usually do podcasts. I highly recommend you listen to those podcasts. So basically, the way it works is you fly or drive, or most people fly to San Diego International Airport. And we like you to arrive before noon and your departure being around 2 p.m. So something about just um, side note is that the San Diego International Airport is going through some remodeling. So if you are coming with Delta, United, all those are, um, you'll be ending up in Terminal 2, which is a newer terminal. And the Terminal 1 is, is kind of a mess because Southwest goes to Terminal 1 and they're doing a remodeling. They said in 2025, they will finish and looks really good, but they still have to go through this um, period. Um, our driver is gonna contact you the day before your departure and they're gonna introduce themselves, tell you like, okay, this is my phone number. This is where I will be looking for you. So basically, once you get your suitcase, you just walk out and in terminal one, it's very simple because it's right there. Terminal two is a little walk and you come out, the sidewalk is all labeled by letters and you tell the driver, this is AMA like station F or B or A and they come right away and catch you. So it's very simple. You know, San Diego is beautiful. You know, you are, the minute you get picked up, you see the marina and the boats and it's very beautiful. Uh, some patients actually come the day before or the, after the surgery, they stick around. We have a special with Hampton Inn, you know, I think is at $169 per night plus tax, which is a, still is a great, um, rate for, you know, these days, <laughs> everything is so expensive. Again, for people joined later on, um, make sure you do the health questionnaire and be present to the end of the webinar for your raffle, uh, to entry to the raffle. Okay, we talked about the six top surgeons. Of course, Dr. Gutierrez, um, that is here with me today, Dr. Miguel Montalvo, Luisiana Valenzuela, Dr. Rodriguez Lopez, Jacqueline Osuna, and last but not least, Dr. Jesus Seja. This is how the health questionnaire uh, approval process is. So you submit the HQ, he goes through our surgeon liaison with the surgeons. We assign the type of procedure you want with your BMI, your condition to the best surgeon. Um, but of course, some people already know they pick a surgeon and we would 
manage all that. And then it will go through our surgeon liaison, make sure everything it checks, your, your medication you're taking. We say, okay, stop this or take this. One thing about medication is we want you to, first of all, comply with the order pre-op and post-op that the surgeon sends you and take the medication, any medication you take on a regular basis, take it with you with the original bottle or labels. So I mean, want to, even though you're not taking it, take it with you to Mexico. Our pre-op diet is basically based on the BMI. If your BMI is low, you don't really need a lot of pre-op diet. Basically, you just do the two-day clear liquid to make sure you are good to go for the surgery. And then BMI, as it goes up, the days that you have to do the pre-op just increases. We talked about our surgical center right now. We're using Me Doctor Hospital. We'll be hopefully soon transitioning to our new center, Azar Hospital. We're using two um, hotels. Uh, at this point, we're using City Express, which is actually got bought by Marriott. City Express Plus was one of the high end hotels that was built very recently and Marriott just purchased all the ones in Mexico. So it's really Marriott operating this City Express. And it's again, is a brand new hotel. It's got a lot of potential and the management is new. They're very eager to work with us. <clears throat> Again, you know, as a as a rule of thumb, you want to stop your any blood thinner insets like Advil, anything like that, ibuprofen take stop one week before surgery. And then again, they will tell you what else else to stop or start after or before surgery. Um, on the day you arrive, we do the pre-ops. And then we will have enough time. Of course, that's why we want you to come before noon. And then we take you to the hotel to rest. We give you broth, jello, ice chips, and your companion stay there after you go to the hospital. And they would have free breakfast included in their hotel package. On the day of the surgery, you show up in the lobby at the time they asked you, and you basically um, be taken to the hospital. And you stay in the hospital until you recover good, and we would send you back to San Diego to travel back. Again, you have options to stay extra in Tijuana. We arrange for all that. With your coordinator, you can arrange that, or we can, um, you can stay in Hampton Inn back in, or any other hotel you like in San Diego, but Hampton Inn is beautiful, close to the airport, close to the water, extremely affordable uh, rates. Um, one of our success, factor is our surgeon's load management. Basically, we cap our surgeons at so many surgeries a day based on the number and the type of the procedure. And this is a major issue because some, sur some centers or surgeons don't have limit. When they get six or seven, eight surgery, they do all of that. Some surgeons do 10, 15 surgeries a day. And guess what? After four or five, you start getting more vulnerable and that's when the complications may occur. So our complication rate is consistently under 1%, under 1%. And these are complications that are very simple. You know, we're talking about maybe the places they cut you to put you know, the wound is like red or infected or things like that. And some, of course, you know, post-op bleeding, 
that we monitor because we put a, most of the time the surgeon put a um, train and they know like it's bleeding from the symptoms, they can pull you back to the surgery if you need to. Now we get to the point that Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez, I'm just gonna introduce, I mean, he is a well-known surgeon around the world right now. And I don't need to say much. His credentials, his education, his fellowships, his membership, his attendance in the international congresses and conferences, and the, the amount of experience he has with as young as he is, with his, um, you know, he has more than probably four or 5,000 surgeries behind him and successful surgeries. And he's double board certified, which is very hard to find in Mexico or anywhere, actually. A lot of the surgeons that they do surgery, they're not bariatric and metabolic certified. So he has all these credentials that you can ask for. I'm going to turn in and have him explain all the type of surgeries we offer and go over them and what we with you after he's done. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here with us, taking your time. Uh, so um, talk a little bit about company, about me. So we're going to uh, go through the um, the procedures that, that we can do. Uh, so normally are the, the main procedures done in the whole world. Some others, uh, they're, uh, most of them FDA approved, some others with good results. So most of them, um, we have, for example, um, some laparoscopic and endoscopic. There are right now endoscopic are having a, a good good future. Obvious, obviously in, in some uh, specific patients, but but uh, we get success. Uh, we have the gastric, the, the lab band, gastric banding. We have the uh, gastric sleep surgery, mini gastric sleep. This is uh, when some patients, they have a, a lower BMI in the lower range and they do not want to have the, the 80%, 85% of her uh, uh, complete uh, gastric sleep taken. So we do, uh, we take less and uh, we, call it a mini gastric sleep. Uh, we have single incision gastric sleep, which is the, the same, but performed by a, by a single incision. Yeah, obviously you have to be on the lower BMI range. Some some criteria criteria have to be uh, met. Uh, we have the room wide gastric bypass, the mini gastric bypass. We're gonna go to, to all of them. Duodenal switch, um, SADES, uh, BPD, uh, and we have the endoscopic gastric balloon, uh, endoscopic, um, sleep uh, gastroplasty and uh, the torate, which is a revisional uh, procedure. Okay. So we were talking a little bit about uh, um, obesity, about uh, treatments. Um, right now we've seen that uh, obesity is a, a, a large pandemic with even more, more deaths than uh, COVID or any other pandemic that you can imagine. Uh, we're, um, our our studies, uh, they say that around 2030, um, about 50% of patients are going to be overweight or obese. And this is all around the world. Um, in China, uh, uh, pediatric uh, child uh, obesity is increasing a lot. Uh, Saudi Arabia, and obviously here in Canada, United States, and Mexico, which is the number one, two, and, and three of the world. So. So it's becoming a, a major pandemic with all the diseases uh, and uh, and the costs. So so we have to take special care on that. Okay. So we have the first uh, the gastric sleep uh, uh, gastric sleep uh, uh, surgery. So this is the most uh, common one right now worldwide perform. Uh, it's uh, the less invasive surgery. Um, it has good results. Obviously, I, I always say, uh, tell all my patients, all of the surgeries are an excellent tool, but there is still a tool. You have to make some changes. As Ron was saying, you have to still do exercise, do uh, keep a diet, uh, but this is a, a big push. So it's gonna help a lot and, uh, and uh, take back all those years that obesity takes from you. So a little bit about the gastric sleep. What we do is that we go directly into the stomach and we're going to remove like 80 and approximate 80% of the of your actual stomach. So leaving a tiny, tiny portion of, of your stomach. 
um, long portion that looks like a sleeve. So the first, um, the first goal, obviously, you're going to get full very fast because you're going to have a, a small stomach. And second of all, that other portion of the stomach, we take it out. So we see mostly in the fundus, which is the upper uh, right uh, part of the stomach, produces a lot of hormones. Most known one is, is ghrelin. Uh, actually, some, some of them call it the hunger hormone. Uh, it goes into your brain and causes you that being cheating, those cravings, that hunger sensation. So after having that part removed, you're going to have less ghrelin, less hunger, um, and this helps greatly. Okay. So we have the uh, the silts. The silts is the, is the same. It's a gastric sleeve uh, surgery, but performed with a, a single incision. Um, this is mostly for aesthetic uh, results. So... Uh, on the inside, the results are the same. Uh, obviously, I was saying some criteria have to be met. Uh, for example, um, whenever we go and patient, it's, it's um, uh, well, we have to take care on the liver. Some patients, they have a big liver, so you're laying down your, your liver on top of your stomach. So in that case, we have to do a liver retractor. So in that case, we, we perform a traditional gastric sleeve. By the criteria uh, are met, we can we can do it through one incision and with uh same results metabolic results and static results as well okay we have the this is an endoscopic procedure uh, as the endoscopic gastric uh, uh gastroplasty so this is um it's not a surgery it's a, an endoscopy so you just go into a slight sedation um outpatient what they do is that they uh, go in with the endoscope inside and uh, use a special a special um, equipment to suture. So what we do is that we put some some stitches inside, creating like a gastroplasty. So we've seen uh, good results with it. Um, obviously, it's, it's not the same as a surgery, but it, for specific uh, patients that are on the lower range BMI and they want to lose weight, so this is a a, a good a good um, uh, procedure and not having a surgery quite so the room why gastric bypass will uh, the the gastric bypass is considered the gold standard still uh this is in open surgery um in this case what we do is that we reroute uh, the intestine so it's a malabsorptive uh um procedure so what we do to explain a little bit is that we go to the stomach first. We're going to cut the proximal portion. Uh, we call it the gastric pouch. Um, the other part, part stays in there. And uh, second of all, well, we go to the intestines since the beginning, and we're going to cut, we're going to measure like around, depends on every patient. Right now we're measuring like around six feet, uh, eight feet, depending on the patient. And what we do is that we cut the intestine down there. We take the distal limb. We're going to bite into that pouch, to that stomach. The, in the other limb, we bite into the same intestine. So it, it then ends up uh, looking like a Y. That's why it's called room Y. Uh, so the, the function of it is that food, instead of going through the whole complete intestine, it's going to jump, going to um, that portion that's that's bypassed, and uh, it's going to go to the last portion not absorbing uh, calories and uh, as well as vitamins and minerals that we're going to talk later on. Okay. So normally, as, as Ron was saying, uh, normally you can fill the uh, health questionnaire and you can say, I want a gastric sleeve, I want a gastric bypass, a revision. So, so normally we can say yes. By the time you're here and we can uh, take care uh, of your background, we can do a thorough uh, investigation. So at, at the end, we we recommend the best procedure for you. So, uh, for example, uh, if you have some um, a, a, a lower range BMI, uh, don't have any other uh, metabolic problems, um, young patient, so the gastric sleeve is an excellent option. Um, on the other uh, case, if you have a bad acid reflux, if you have metabolic problems, diabetes, um, other things like that. So in that case, we will recommend a, a gastric bypass for, for you. Okay. We have uh, the mini gastric bypass. The mini gastric bypass is it's a type of gastric bypass. Um, 
FDA approved. Uh, well, right now it's almost almost uh, five six years ago. Um, in this case, what what we do is that we're gonna go to the stomach. We're gonna cut the the pouch uh, the pouches a little bit longer, and we go to the intestine. The difference is we do not not gonna cut the intestine down there. We take the limb as it is, and we we call it an omega loop in surgery. So it's called Bini because instead of having two cuts, two suturing, two stapling, we just have one, the proximal one, which is um, uh, reachable by endoscopy, if any problem. And because of this, it's like 15 minutes less. So that's why it's called mini-gastric bypass. It should be called one anastomosis gastric bypass. So um, since the beginning, we've been having the same results as the room Y. So, so it's an, an excellent choice as well. Obviously, to say one or the other, it's going to depend on different factors. The, the First of all, if a patient has bad acid reflux uh, problem before, so we prefer to go to the room Y gastric bypass because there's less um, um, risk of it. Um, other than that, some like a young female, some they want to say we go to the mini gastric bypass if it's a revision surgery. So it depends on, 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 on the patient. But both of them are are an excellent option, and the results are are the same. We have the uh, duodenal switch, okay, the because the bite of B, uh, BPD and the sadis. This is a more extreme, more um, uh, surgery. Um, this is for surgeries that we have to lower a big big amount of weight, or you have problems. Uh, cardiac problems, uh, diabetes problem that you have to uh, return to your uh, um, um, normal life, or we can say lowering the, those risks uh, faster. In this case, uh, we're going to do like, uh, well, in the, in the Sadies, we're going to do like a sleep. Okay, that's the first step. And second of all, we're going to do like a room, like a mini gastric bypass in Sadies, but it's going to, the anastomosis, the, the, the binding, the junction is going to be on the duodenum. So this has, that's the, um, that we gonna have one more uh, a bulb, okay? So we can say um, uh, it's, it could be a, a little bit better than, it, well, less risk of, a, of um, um, the dumping syndrome, okay? That you could have it with the room Y. Um, and it, it has these specific uh, uh, indications. Uh, obviously, because it's a more uh, invasive surgery, you, you have to take be taking more care on your vitamins, uh, uh, protein, uh, minerals, because it's uh you're gonna have a, just like two three meters of intestines, the last portion of it, absorbing calories and 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 minerals and vitamins. So so it's a, a good option, but we have to see if the, it's the correct for you. Okay, one, one common question is how, how fast can I return to work? This is gonna depend on, on uh, type of procedure, uh, type of work that you do that's very important um, and some other diseases that you could have. Uh, normally we recommend in general like two to three weeks, um, but this is gonna depend on, on those factors. If it's uh, an office, a desk job, uh, some patients are returning even a, a week after. Um, we have to see how do you feel because well, before, prior to the surgery, we're going to be doing a pre-op diet. And uh, uh, this is, well, low-calorie diet. You're going to be fasting the day of the surgery. We're going to continue on a special diet uh, after surgery. So the first step is a week with just clear liquids. And then we're moving on. So at first, you can feel low on energy, um, weak. But uh, this is just temporary. Later on, you're going to have double energy. So that's gonna depend on the type of work that you do. We have some lifting restrictions, so we want to avoid doing like heavy abdominal strengthening. So uh, not like pulling yourself up, lifting heavy things. So that's gonna depend on how fast can you return. Some other recommendations, well, with uh, with the pandemic, with COVID, we start doing some other um, uh, recommendations. So so world change and, and, and we have to take care on, on future uh, pandemics. So so you can, uh, well, right now you can you can bring uh, your, or wear a uh, mask as we are doing. Um, 
as we you know, social distancing. Uh, it's recommended right now. It's not mandatory, but recommended that you can test prior, even if you have some some flu, because you're gonna be uh, flying, uh, having contact with a lot of a lot of people. So it's not uh, having your your test prior to the surgery. And well, vaccination it's recommended, but it's it's up to you. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gutierrez. Um, <clears throat> we would use your expertise at the end when we are doing our Q and A answers. Um, I just need to cover a couple more um, points here, and one is financing. Our packages are extremely affordable, um, and we actually. Um, reduce our prices this year to make it even better for people. And considering the inflation that has been not in U.S. but everywhere in Mexico, and also you know dollar losing its value, our our packages are extremely affordable. However, if you still need financing, you can. Um, you can use, you know, either personal loans or medical loans, you know, uh, United Medical Credit does medical loans, but there are other options like SoFi, your own bank actually, uh, if you have a relationship with your bank, it would be so much better to get the loan from them. Or some people um, belong to credit unions. Those are really great places to look for money and um, with lower interest, interest rates. And, but one thing I want to emphasize is please do not apply to too many places at one time because every time they pull your credit, it hits your score and it will be harder to get uh, a loan. Um, one of, again, we talked about why NBC, one of the advantages of going with us that you can take advantage of the discounted medical tourism coverage, which is MTI. And basically this covers some of the, you know, travel additional expenses that you may occur in complication, has some complication coverage and unwanted, unfavorable outcomes. So, and then it covers you from the time you departure to the time that you arrive back home and basically 45 days after. So it's pretty good coverage. And um, this would cost probably three to four hundred dollars if you were to purchase it. Um, we are also looking to make uh, just a basic package, which is this, plus additional benefits that uh, with with a higher premium. But this is at at this point is offered at hundred forty nine dollars. So it's extremely affordable for what it covers. And it only, you, we are offering because of our volume, because of our experience, because of being in industry. So this company is offering this discounted price to us. And honestly, we are not marking it up. Basically we are absorbing all the costs of administration, all the costs of uh, you know, doing this, inclusion in our packages just for your safety of you know so your safety and peace of mind you know that's why you want to go with a company that has a good track record because it's a peace of mind you know what you're getting and insurance is another thing that gives you more peace of mind it's like i have coverage and uh, you know, we also, I mean, we talked about these terminals and stuff like that. I meant to mention that one of the benefits of Southwest uh, is that 
it's easy to reschedule. Of course, you have to pay the extra. And also they, what they do is they offer, if you need two seats when you're traveling, they, they actually give you the second seat to be comfortable coming in or going out for at no charge. So that's really a good, I think, policy that Southwest has. Okay, last but not least is bariatric vitamins. So again, this is you acquiring this tool. Now you have to work with this tool. Proper diet, act, being active, staying active, lifestyle. And inclusion of vitamins is huge because your body is, anatomy has changed, you know, not so much in sleep, but in the bypass and DS, because now you're not absorbing as much as the nutrient in the food. So you need to replenish that. So the minerals and vitamins are huge, multivitamins. And then of course, you know, you can talk to our nutritionists and find out what, whether I need to take calcium, iron, and all that extra stuff. But Emerge is a vitamin that is a specifically made for bariatric patients, post-op bariatric patients. And it gives you the right quantities of the minerals and vitamins that your body needs. You can take a regular multi -multi multivitamin, but that has less of what you need so you have to take more of it, then you're getting more of the things you don't need, and then it will cost you at the end more. So by doing this, you're getting quality and quantity you need. You can order that when you sign up, or you could go to emergebariatrics.com. Okay, now we're gonna open up for Q and A. Um, our session. So okay, Dr. Gutierrez, you want to talk about some revisions, you know, revisions and reversals. That's another thing we do is reversals. Uh -huh. So maybe you want to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We, we do all kinds of uh, revision surgeries. Obviously, it could be one uh, less that you have previous uh, uh, several surgeries, but uh, we can do most of the revision surgeries, even uh, reversals for some patients, which is a minor uh, percentage, but they lose a lot of weight and they, they go the other way to the uh, malnutrition. So we can reverse uh, the surgery. But um. But yeah, we, we can do revisions and uh and doing the best one for for you in your specific case. For uh for example, well we can do revisions, well, um lab bands to gastric sleeves to uh uh wise. Um gastric sleeve, we, we have a, a lot of gastric sleeves all, all around the world. Normally around five years, sometimes they can start regaining weight, so we can compare it to a bypass or mini bypass. Or, or or Sadie's. So so we have a lot of options and, and we gonna try to do the, the best for you. Thanks me. I think
I'm sorry, I don't know if I was on mute. Uh, I was telling you about. Uh, so this patient has a surgery on the 20th of February. They were asking, um, what time is my surgery? So your, the time of the surgery is not determined until a day or two before actual surgery. It de depends on the surgeon, the load of the surgeons, everything else. So again, what you want to do is worry about getting to San Diego. And once you're there, you don't have to worry about, oh, when is my surgery date? What do I do now? Everything would flow from there. The driver is going to pick you up. They're going to contact you the day before you arrive. You would know where to go to get picked up, how to get picked up. From there, everything flows. And that's what we do. We tell you, okay, now we're going to take you to the pre-op. Pre-op done, we're going to take you to hotel. The hotel tell you, okay, I need you to be in the lobby certain time. You get picked up. You go to the hospital. So all this flows after. And you don't have to worry about it right now. About the pills we explained. You'll be notified which pill to take, which pill you're not taking, if you're taking things on a regular basis. As far as packing, well, right now it's a little cold. But remember, Tijuana is right next to San Diego. And San Diego has one of the best weather. So it's not like has extreme cold and extreme hot. So you don't have to pack big luggages. We actually want you to bring as small luggage as possible. Don't pack so many things. Make sure you have new clean clothes after surgery. Don't wear the same stuff you came with because your wounds, you know, don't want to be exposed to, you know, some shirt that you wore when you were coming in the plane. So just make sure you have clean new clothes after surgery, but you don't have to pack so many things. Some people we see bring big suitcases and stuff. You don't need that. And so, so the first day is pre-op. We do the EKG, we do the blood test, you do work with the internist. And again, what you get approved for is not the surgery plan. You still have a chance to talk to the surgeon when you're down there and make sure this is a proper surgery. In the last minute, where can suit you from bypass to sleeve or sleeve to bypass, whatever it is, and we would refund you or charge you more to get the differences. So don't worry about any of this. And vitamins I went over. So we just want you to take Emerge. Okay, so do you make us use a stool softener or we shouldn't take any of those? So I'm not sure. Do you recommend they take stool softener? Uh, we do not recommend it. Some patients, they like to, to do it, but uh, but it's not recommended since we're going to be working on the stomach. You're going to be doing a diet. Um, so it's not completely recommended. Um, uh, some patients, as I was saying, they, they, they do, or some doctors, they, they recommend, but it's not, not that uh, necessary. Okay, um, would I still be hungry after my surgery? Okay, um, well, uh, yeah, yes, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna have a hunger, but it's not gonna be the same as before, as uh, we, we were telling about the metabolic effect, the hormones effect. So, um, so this is gonna help greatly. So you're not gonna have, even some patients, they do not, have hunger anymore so they, they say I, I eat because i know i have to but uh but uh yeah you, you gonna be hungry you're gonna you're gonna eat but you're gonna have less hunger and and feel uh full very fast so so that's the difference i'm low bmi 27 can i still have surgery done 
Normally, uh, we recommend. Well, we're we're guided by uh, by IFSO ASMBS uh, who uh, guidelines. Normally, they recommend doing surgery uh, on uh, on BMI above uh, thirty. There are some uh, certain uh, patients that they can go, but this is going to be mostly looking at a metabolic effect uh, instead of uh, losing weight. Uh, so that's going to depend on maybe you have diabetes, maybe you have uh, cardiac problems that, that they need to, to lower, um, a little bit of weight or, or change your, your metabolic, uh, status. So maybe in that case we can, we can do it. Uh, but do you have any, any disease or other? So it will be better to start with, uh, the first step will be diet and exercise. They're asking about, so some Saturdays are coordinators working. So I'm trying to see who is online today. So I will get the answer to that soon for you. Okay, so is that help? Only while we stay in the facility or once we pack home, we have more resources as well. Can someone leave? Okay, so I'm not sure what that means, but we do have coordinators down there, whether you're in a hotel or you're in the hospital. Now, when you go back home, we would be in contact with you. I, I believe that our nutritionist is contacting you um, like a week after you arrive. You still get calls from us. Make sure you're good. But uh, you can always call us back. We're always in the office waiting, you know, if you need anything after your surgery. So yeah, so if this raffle is for patients who are actually on the calendar, but again, you have to be qualified to get surgery with Dr. Gutierrez. So if you, whether you are on the calendar or not, or you have HQ submitted before, you are entered into the raffle. Tammy is saying that she's um, scheduled for May 18th and she's looking forward to start a healthy life. We are looking forward to see you down there. So a lot of uh, people are just saying, um, just saying hi to us and okay. So they're saying about the percentage of the stomach is taken in a mini pot, mini sleeve procedure. Is that a big difference between sleeve and mini sleeve? You are muted, Dr. Gutierrez. Sorry, <laughs> I muted you. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I was reading in. And he said, so yeah, we were talking a little bit about uh, the mini uh, gastric sleep. So some patients there are uh, in the lower re range BMI, don't have any other diseases. So they want to not to have that restrictive uh, sensation as with the complete uh, sleep. So yeah, we, we can arrange doing that. Um, obviously, I tell uh, those patients that uh, the worldwide result data that we have are in a complete sleep. So um, maybe you can have less um uh, weight loss, uh, or maybe some uh, regain, easier regain. So, so just keep mentalized, have that in mind. And yeah, in that, in those cases, we can take a little bit less. Uh, instead of having uh, eighty percent, we can take like seventy and approximate, kind of like that. So, so yeah, we can we can do that. Okay, just a moment. I need to capture this. Okay, so. Do you guys do gastric RNY revisions? 
Yeah, um, yeah, we do the uh, the gastric. Uh, well, it's a gastric bypass, the wound wide gastric bypass. So yeah, of course, uh, uh, we can do uh, uh, as a primary or as a revision surgery. We can, we can do it. I had Nissan fundal placation almost three years ago. Can I do a gastric sleeve without taking any of my previous surgery? Um, just by leaving a little bit of the fundus. Um, I think in that case, uh, well, you could still do it, but it will be not having the best surgery for you. So in that case, the best thing to do it will be um dismantling the the Nissan fund application, and uh and uh, doing a revision to a ruin Y gastric bypass. Uh, if you if you dismantle it and do a gastric sleeve, you can still have some some um, acid reflux problems later on. So uh, the root and why is an anti reflux surgery, so it's going to help with that and and losing weight. So so that will be the best surgery for you. You can still the uh, the other thing, just cutting a little bit of stomach, but you can have more complication rate, no uh, good results, and uh, and wouldn't be the best thing for you. I'm not sure um, if you mentioned about TOR, which is the endoscopic way of bypass reversion. Yeah, the, the TOR, yeah, the TOR ray, it's an endoscopic uh, revisional, you can call it procedure. In this case, when a, a patient previously has a, a room Y um, or a mini gastric bypass surgery, so we have the anastomosis on, on the inside. It, it has some some dimension. Sometimes by by time it increases. So patients they feel like they can uh, um, eat more or or start regaining weight. So in that case, what what we do is that by endoscopy we we can say we we like burn. We can we use electricity special to to create a small uh, anastomosis, small uh, um, entrance. So so that's the toroid procedure, and 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 it helps as well. What revision do you recommend for a five-year post-op sleeve? And I've been on a Zempic one year, maintained weight. So the current weight is 165. Goal weight is 145. Surgery weight, 223. Okay. So she's so lost about 60 pounds. 58. And she needs another... 20 to go down yeah i think in this case well the wrist sleeve is not gonna ensure you uh losing more weight or or not good results so i think the best thing will will be uh going into uh um gastric bypass or or even a, a sadis so that that's gonna depend on your weight uh your background but i think this will be the best procedure uh on a vision for you Okay, about passport. So yes, we highly recommend you have passport book or a passport card to make your crossing back to US easier with no issues. Um, you know, I mean, used to be taking the passport used to take a long time to get, but now they should be pretty simple. If not, you can always make the process faster, you know get the expedited. Okay, so the lower prices, so we're not talking about, so we, when we talked about reducing our prices, we meant like eight months ago. Um, so for now, we're not changing any prices for 24. So we pretty much kept the same reduced prices that we did in 23. But um, yeah, so, but again, you know, our expenses going up, the dollar losing its value is a huge factor that, you know, is we're basically absorbing all that. Revision from a RNY to DS. You're on mute. I, 
put you on mute. Sorry, because it resonates. I... It keeps getting on mute. Sorry. Yeah, you can you can do it. Uh, it. It could be a little bit challenging because you could say that you will have to revert the room Y first because as we were we were telling in the in the DS we're gonna have like a like a sleep shaped stomach and in the room Y we have a cut stomach. So we're gonna have to uh, uh, bind the stomach back again and uh, undo the other anastomosis and do the the DS. You can you can still do it. Um, only if it were to be a lot of scar tissue, some some cases, some specific specific case. But yeah, you can you can be able to do it. So, is there a risk of stomach being stretched? Okay, well, the stomach is mostly muscle. It has two layers of muscle, so it could grow a little bit back again, but never as as before. As prior so imagine we're gonna take like 80 percent so it's not gonna grow but yeah you can you can feel like a year a year and a half after that you can fit a little bit more sometimes that you don't have that same restriction as as in the in the beginning so so yeah i could stretch a little bit but this is gonna depend on on you following uh, the diet follow, doing exercise following the indication so that that's gonna that's gonna be the, the most important factor So we do actually have also um, packages for buddies, what we call buddy discounts, and you can ask your patient coordinator for that. They're talking about, they're asking about the age limit. That's a really good question. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll add, um... A couple of years ago, the guidelines were uh, to do surgery on, um, well, on an 18 to 65 years. Then later on, lowering the age, depending on your growth. Um, right now, uh, this is 2022 guidelines, worldwide guidelines. They're saying that we can do uh, surgeries on, on patients that are younger and there are older. This is going to depend on your, uh, it's called frailty. Uh, so this is going to depend on other diseases that you have, cardiac problems. But um, but yeah, if if uh, we can do an, an an assessment and if it's safe, we can do it. Even we've been doing like on a 72, 73 years patients. But this is going to depend on your background. But yeah, we we can still do the surgery. So I need to. Um make a comment here about the age. Um, of course, what, you know, we have six team of surgeons, everyone has different expertise, everyone has different criteria, but in general, we're not compromising medical practice and med medical ethics for taking a patient. And I've seen this over and over. We just lost a patient to another company. This 17 year old was approved with a different company, but he wasn't approved with our chief surgeon. And, but we don't compromise because we want to get one surgery because our surgeons have a certain guideline and standards criteria for approval. And yes, we do. I mean, we have taken 16 year old uh, before. We've taken maybe a 15 year old. Basically, you need to make sure that person's body growth has matured, right? And if our surgeon feel that's not the case, they're not going to do the surgery. So, but other, other, this was a, actually a major company, our competitor that took this, this patient. So, and sometimes, you know, it's like, we, we want to get things that are not good for us and whoever gives it to us, we will just go with them. But, but we have to pay attention to the guidelines and the guidelines are made for a reason. And then of, of course, you know, the, the, the upper age is changed too, right? Because people, 
are tending to live longer, right? So before maybe it was 60, 62, now a 65 year old or 70 year old may be you know, healthy. So we consider all those factors in. So it's not like one size fit all. We customize every HQ and we pay attention to every surgeon, you know, differently. So for the reduced price, our prices starts for gastric sleeve. That's our starting price at 4,395. That's, of course, each surgeon has a little different price because of the number of years they've been with us or whatever that surgery is offered at a different price, but that's the starting price. Now, there are additional charges that sometimes you may occur. Like if the surgeon finds hernia during the surgery, let's say gigastic sleeve, hernia repair is huge, hiatal hernia. And if, the, if it's not fixed, you have reflux problems later on. And that's going to haunt you for your life. So our surgeons repair, they, they actually examine the hiatal hernia. If there exists, they will repair it during the surgery. But then once you come out, they will ask you for, I don't know, maybe $395, whatever they ask you. So this is additional charges or your BMI is more than 50 or 49. You know, these are all additional charges. That's a starting point. Our new hospital is not open, hopefully in a month or two. You know, again, there's so many pieces has to be ready to, to get that done. I'm gonna go back to make sure because we're kind of running out of time. Okay, so smoking. You wanna talk about smoking, Dr. Gutierrez? Sorry. Yeah, of course, uh, smoking is very important. So. Yeah, we're going to try to for you to stop smoking as soon as possible. If not, uh, a couple of weeks, like two weeks at least. But uh, but this is going to be very important. Mostly if you're going to have a um, a bypass or a mini bypass, a mini gastric bypass. So acid um, smoking increases uh, acid in the, in the stomach. So it could increase the risk of after having the surgery, you back home, you can have a marginal ulcer. So this is... Um, because the, the acid keeps going into the intestine, so it could cause ulcers in the intestine. So so we want to try to do the, the soon as possible and to and to lower that. But uh but yeah, at, at least two weeks as much as you can. So let's 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 cover a couple more because we have a lot more to answer, but we don't have the time. So when can they have sex after surgery? Okay, so um, this is the same. We want to avoid doing like heavy abdominal strengthening, but this is um like we have some restri restrictions. So uh, lifting restrictions, no no lift more than heavy than fifteen pounds um like uh doing like abdominals kind of that like that but other than that you can continue on your regular life do everything uh we recommend to to as every, everything to start slowly and uh, it's going to depend on how you feel so so yeah you can do your regular life uh but taking care of yourself okay i'm i kind of touched on this i'm going to expand a little bit more so right now we're not in Azar Hospital, which is our new facilities. As it stands, we're using Me Doctor Hospital as before. You come in the first day, we do the pre-op, you stay in City Express, which is Marriott, and your companion stays with you. When you go to the hotel, your companion stays behind in the hospital. That's the current situation. It may change later on, but that's what we have right now. Can you explain about uh, the difference between DS, which is traditional BPT DS, and SADI? SADI, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, duodenal switch DS, it's uh, it's kind of like a, a Roux and Y gastric bypass having two anastomoses, but the anastomosis is done in the duodenum. That's why it's called the duodenal switch. Um, the uh, SADIs and SADIs is kind of like the, the mini gastric bypass. 
we're going to have the anastomosis and duodenum, but instead of cutting the intestine and having two limbs and one doing anastomosis and the duodenum, the other one here is that we take the intestine and we're going to bite it into an omega loop fashion, a, a brown omega loop. So, so it, it has one anastomosis instead of two. So it could be called a mini gastric bypass of the, of the, of the DS. That's the difference. They're asking about death rate. Over 12 years that NBC has been in business, we've never lost a patient in the OR or you know, on the surgery. So that, that basically is zero. Now, we're talking about post-op complications. We're talking about you know, long-term, I mean, if you don't have any complications, so there are short-term complication and long-term complication. Short-term complication is when you are under surveillance in the hospital and you're still around. Those are the more fatal, if you wish to say, more fatal complications. And by the time you are released, you're pretty good. If you keep up with the diet, and not lifting heavy weight and not doing anything you're not supposed to do, there is very little chance that you leak or have some kind of complication. Those we call long-term complications. But again, if something happened when you came to US, whether you ate something wrong or something happened, you know, you should, depends on what symptoms are, you need to be checked. But those are the like, past and you know we don't have control over those but you, once you are out of the hospital you should be good to go you know just make sure you do the post-op diet which is four weeks of coming from liquid to solid you know again don't push yourself don't leave heavy weight you know don't try to start doing crazy exercises too soon just listen to your body So if they have had tummy tuck or some kind of procedure before, is that an issue with getting revision of bend or sleeve or anything like that? Yeah, no, no issues. Actually, uh, today I did a patient from a, with a previous uh, tummy tuck. Uh, the only thing is that um, uh, with the tummy tuck, because you stretch your skin, so we have less uh, working space on the inside. But we are uh, are, stay, uh, are still able to to do it. We we can manage doing that. But it's the same. No no problem. I believe that we published this video after, you know, we, so we make recording of these webinars and we put them on the YouTube. But you can ask your coordinator and they could even send you a private link so you can um, watch it again. Oh, they're talking about, do you re recommend removing gallbladder? That's very important, the gallbladder removal. Okay, yeah, that, that's that's a common question. Um, we always say any, any condition that makes you lose weight, any of it, uh, uh, surgery, uh, drugs, everything, uh, could develop gallstones by time. So having this kind of surgery, you can, you can, uh, you are more uh, uh, prone uh, to to having uh, gallstones later on. Right now, we've seen that um, 
that like around 25% of patients can develop gallstone problems later on. So it's not an indication to take gallbladder out as well. Back in the 90s, it was. But, uh, but right now, we just recommend to do a follow-up uh, with your with your primary care doctor. Some patients, they've been having some problems or others, they want to take the gallbladder out as well at the same time. So, so yeah, we can we can do that uh, by, by, by patient request. And, um, but it's not a, a mandatory that we have to take gallbladder at the same time. Okay, well, we are kind of running out of time. I still want to make sure that we have the raffle going on. And uh, so what I could do is, um, if you still have your question unanswered, please uh, reach out to our, um, our staff. If you have a specific coordinator that was assigned to you, you can ask them a question or call our office 855-768-7247, mexicoberiatriccenter.com. So just uh, ask us your questions unanswered. And I'm so sorry we cannot uh, answer everything. I'm going to um, look for here. So I have, so we, so I have the winner here, and we pulled the name is actually Amanda Payne. Amanda Payne is online. I can see her. I'm going to let Amanda talk. So, uh, Amanda, you're um, muted. If you, there you go. Hi, Amanda. How are you? Hello, just fine. Okay, great. So congratulations. You Thank are the you. winner for $2,000 off of your bariatric package. Um, so you want to share some of information with us and uh, ask, you know, where are you from? Where are you coming from and all that? I'm from Oklahoma. And, all right. Um, my husband, my daughter, and I are all coming. I think we're putting our date as June 20th, and we're all okay. coming to do it together. So, Wow. Amazing. So my daughter's actually on here, too, listening. So, Very good. Very good. Good to have you. And um, do you know who's your coordinator by any uh, chance? Samantha, I think. Samantha. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I will have them reach out to you. If you, um, you know, Samantha is not working today, but we'll reach out to you. It would uh, be a pleasure to see you down in Mexico and um, have the best wishes for you, daughter and your family. Alrighty, so I just wait to hear from Samantha. Yes, of course you can always call us on Monday. She's not working today, but Monday you can call us. I will also ask them to call you. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank every one of you joining us today. And Dr. Gutierrez, it's a pleasure to have you again. Thank you so much for taking time and be with us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.